Howdy, recently I completely renovated my entryway and added a new transom window above the door. But one thing that still wasn't quite right was my mailbox. It was an old worn metal mailbox that wasn't matching the more modern style and it totally blended in with the new black paint. So it was time for an upgrade. And with this upgrade, I wanted to try a new to me woodworking joint, finger joints or box joints. So let's get started. Next up was to glue up some scrap knotty alder I had lying around to make a panel that would eventually become the outside of the box. While that was drying, I built a jig that I was going to use along with my miter gauge on the table saw to cut the finger joints. I did this by cutting a hole or a dado in the piece of wood the size of the pin or in this case 11 16 and then I glued in a scrap piece of wood I had ripped earlier to the 11 16 as a pin. If I were to do this again, I would have made the pin a little bit thinner so it's easier to remove the piece when cutting the, the finger joints. Then I took the jig over with my miter gauge to the table saw and started practicing on some scrap pieces of wood. I wanted to do this just to dial everything in to make sure that the width in between the pin and the blade was the correct width um, to make sure that the height of the blade was correct and you'll see me practicing here a lot practicing over and over and moving um, checking the width in between the blade and the pin and moving that over and just lots and lots of little tweaks until i get it right and before i cut those finger joints on my actual pieces Another thing to note is you want your scrap pieces to be the same thickness as your actual material is going to be. I was using just some scrap plywood here which was a little bit thicker than my actual pieces. So once I got down to my real piece, you'll see out later on, I had a little bit of error but everything still worked out in the end. Once I got the table saw all set up to where I liked it, it was time to go back to that piece that I glue, glued up earlier. I got it trimmed down, um, sanded, and then I was going to cut everything in line so that my grain pattern would match. So I did a left side, then the top, and then the right side. And then one big deep breath and I started cutting my pins. Um, I did in the beginning find out that my blade height wasn't high enough so I don't know if that was just a mix up in my settings um, but it was wobbling on the pin so I got that adjusted and then continued cutting the rest of them um, and just to, one thing to note is once you get to the end of one piece you want to make sure you flip that board and use it as your spacer or starting point for the next board that it's going to be attached to. And this is what I was left with. The pins were a little tall, I think from the error and some thickness, but nothing a little sanding can't take care of down the road. Then I glued up those pieces using some exterior rated glue and some squares to help make sure everything was gonna be square. <laughs> If you're interested in building one of these mailboxes for yourself, I have complete build plans available on my website. And once it was dry, I took it over to my belt sander and sanded down those pins. And I think the final result for my first time doing some box joint finger joints turned out pretty good. I'm happy with them. Now it's time to make the inside box of the mailbox. So I'm just setting up the table saw here to cut it out in uh, 3 quarter inch plywood. There's going to be four sides and a bottom. And since the mailbox is going to tilt out, we have to make the back sides shorter than the front to allow room for the box to pivot. And I decided to drill some pocket holes before I cut those angles um, using a Craig pocket hole jig. Um, I just thought it'd be easier before the angles were there. Once those holes were drilled, I drew the lines using just a ruler to make sure everything was lined up. And then I got my jigsaw and the fun began. I had a dull blade, needed to change the battery, um, couldn't get things clamped right. But in the end, I got two, two pieces with an angle cut on them. Not my best or cleanest cut, so I decided to clamp the two pieces together and then take them back over to my belt sander and just clean them up so the two sides would be exactly the same um, and nice and straight and pretty. 
And that's where this project started to rock and roll. I started assembling that box and got into a groove and completely forgot that I wanted to cut a dado on the bottom of it so that I could put the bottom of the box in there. So ultimately I get all four sides together and forget the fifth side. So to install the bottom or the fifth side, I ended up just using um, a piece of plywood, some glue and some brad nails. It's a mailbox, it's not gonna carry anything heavy, but in the end, I would have really liked to have that dado in there, just been cleaner and last longer. Um, but you do what you gotta do. Now for the pivoting action. I went ahead and drilled the um, holes for the bolts that I was going to use to help pivot um, on the inside box first. And I drew a little pilot hole, one inch up and one inch over um, from the outside edges on both the inside piece and the outside piece. And then drilled that out to 3 8 inch bolt or enough room that a 3 8 inch bolt will fit into there. And then I was just testing out some washers to help me make sure that my spacing was appropriate. Once everything looked good and looked like it was gonna work, it was time to finish it. I painted the inside white with just a, cup, a can of spray paint. I painted the hardware and washers and everything black with more spray paint. And the outside frame, or the Naughty Alder part of it, I put some general finishes, um, exterior 450 on it. Now to get this bad boy hung up, I was just gonna use a couple of L brackets and hook them to the outside frame and then hook those to my wall. So just screen them in here. I do end up using a scrap piece of wood to help me make sure that when I do screw them all the way in, that they are gonna be completely flush, just like they would be flush going up against the wall of my house. Okay, the fun part. We get to get rid of the old mailbox, hooray! And then I got started installing the new one. Just picked out a spot where I wanted it and we're just gonna hang that outside frame and then we'll be putting it all together at the end. So get that up there level and get it screwed into place. All right, well that looks nice and sturdy. Now it's time to go get the inside mail part. Woohoo. Do a little test fit. And the hard part here was trying to figure out how to get the washers to stay in place. So I used a little bit of um, CA glue just to hold them there so I could thread the bolts through and that's gonna give me the even spacing all the way around the mailbox. And then you can see how well it pivots all the way open, but it goes all the way open. So we needed to put in a stop or a magnet here so it doesn't flop open and then something that'll help hold it up there. So I installed just one of these cabinet latches and that worked perfectly. And last step was to install the pull so we have some easy way to open and close this thing. I absolutely love my new mailbox. It really sets the tone for the entryway, just totally completes the look. I hope you enjoyed this project as well. If you did, please hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed to my channel for more awesome builds. And remember, build loud, build wild, and have an awesome day.